今日来ていただいて大変ありがたいと思いますが、えっと、この、えっと、JLAC というのはもう十数年以上、えー、やってまして、えーまあ、大体あの、えっと、誰か外国の方いらっしゃってこの最初の挨拶いつもまあ半分英語半分日本語みたいな感じでやってますけども、えっと、今日は講演者は、えっと、外国の方一人いらっしゃるんですけどもあのリモートであのもうビデオになってしまいますが、えっとまあ、あのそれでもちょっと最初はあのスライドは英語で作ってますので、えっと挨拶は英語でお願いします。で、あの。So, you know, the, at the beginning of this meeting, you know, I'll always try to summarize a bit where we are with LASTO and、uh, what is happening in the community、uh, and what we see as, as interesting and important. So, today I think we all can agree that LASTO you know, remains the、um, still most widely used solution for. Uh, high end HPC clusters. So, if you look at the top 100, we do this you know, analysis every year,、uh, and、uh, typically, Lustro users are in the 60, 70, 75, 80 percent range. And this typically includes the very large systems at、uh, the US DoD and、uh, et cetera, et cetera.、Um, and、uh, it is also the most widely used. Solution for HPC production systems, meaning smaller systems, industry systems,、uh, user level systems.、Um, now, in the last couple of years, a couple of things have happened that really, I think, changed the market for this solution quite dramatically. So, one is、uh, that a couple of years ago, cloud providers started to adopt a Lustre solution、uh, as one of their storage portfolio solutions. Uh, we did this initially with r a m Cloud almost 10 years ago.、Uh, then Amazon did follow.、Uh, most recently,、uh, Microsoft announced a new service.、Um, so, today, almost all of the large public cloud providers in the US,、uh, as well as in China,、uh, as well as in Europe,、uh, offer uh, an on demand、uh, Lustre solution for various types of workloads from HPC. To、uh, AI training workloads. The other thing that, that really happened in the last couple of years is that、uh, with the expansion of the generative AI market and the LLM training market,、uh, I think the demand for high end shared file、uh, solutions has really exploded.、Uh, and this year at Supercomputing, it was you know, very clear that、uh, you know, all Uh, HPC large systems you know, are starting to look really, really small when compared to the types of systems that organizations like OpenAI,、uh, Microsoft, Facebook have installed uh, for uh, LLM training purposes. So, LLM training has really become the, the killer applications for large GPU clusters. The size of these clusters is expanding, and with the size of the clusters, the demand for、uh, shared file solutions is also expanding. So, we see a huge surge,、uh, especially in the US,、um, as well as in China, and a bit less in other markets for these types of solutions.、Um, and、uh, what is happening right now is that we also see increasing adoption、uh, of our scalable shared file solutions, Lustre solutions, by specialized GPU cloud providers. Mostly, again, in the US, as well as in China. But there are also examples in Japan that、um, I think we, we are not allowed yet to talk about,、uh, but we will be able to talk about maybe next year. And、uh, finally, there is a, a, a different market that you know, we started to see a couple of years ago with autonomous driving.、Uh, there is an emerging market for、uh, systems, that storage systems that require both very large capacities and very high performance for. Uh, inference type of workloads. Typically, inference type of workloads don't require a lot of shared file, don't require a lot of performance, that, but there are certain types of inference workloads, especially if they involve you know, very large、uh, collections of, of video data,、uh, that require very large systems,、um, uh, both capacity and 
uh, performance in these systems um, starting many years ago um, uh, have shown that sort of Lustro is really a, a, a very nice and easy solution for these types of workloads. So how do sort of these new types of GPU clusters look like? So I was this kind of uh, an in-house NVIDIA system. Uh, so this is uh, uh, public information, so I'm not um, uh, it's a system that has been announced, I think, in 2022. Uh, so this is the NVIDIA EOS supercomputer. Uh, I'm sure there is already a newer one installed that we don't know about, uh, or multiple newer ones. So, but it, it is kind of an example of how these systems look like. So this is a, a 4,000, or more than 4,000, 4,608 H100 GPU cluster, um, all built with uh, NDR400 with a dedicated network for compute uh, and a dedicated network for storage. And the storage system is a Lustre file system with close to 200 OSSs that provides about two terabyte per second read and write bandwidth. So these are kind of the systems that we see increasingly, uh, both uh, in industry, in cloud providers, uh, and uh, in sort of flagship uh, public sector organizations now. Um, so now, in addition um, to uh, you know just provide standard off-the-shelf Lustre solutions, we also have done quite a bit of work recently, uh, mostly together with NVIDIA in the US, um, on optimizing um, shared file uh, Lustre file systems for specific workloads, notably training workloads. Training workloads typically you know read the same data many many times all along. Um, so, you know, one thing that we have done um, already two years ago, and I think it's probably approaching usability now, uh, is uh, see it what we can do with things like caching to improve training workloads. So, we had uh, actually, by a team here in Japan, come up with this idea of using a client-side cache that is managed through the file system uh, as a way to improve uh, read performance uh, or improve read performance for um, application work workloads that read the same data all along and along uh, many times. So here you see uh, a training workload that essentially is, is a multi-epoch training. Um, you see here sort of this is one epoch. Uh, so there is a lot of uh, file system activity here. So data is being read. Then you know, for the test, uh, and this is a relatively small system, uh, caches are dropped, you do another epoch, same read workload, uh, same performance. Um, now, if I add this persistent client cache, what happens is here, um, you know, I start with my, my epoch, read a lot of data, but as soon as the read starts, um, the asynchronous transfer to uh, the local PCC cache, meaning cache managed through the file system, uh, starts. So then, when I do my second uh, epoch here, I read the same data from the cache. Uh, the file system activity is a fraction of what it has been before. So at the application level, you know, if that is a five to ten percent reduction in wall clock time per epoch, then essentially my storage system is for free. So these are the things that we are working on uh, these days with, with partners, uh, and we hope that we can bring these solutions to a broader market uh, fairly soon. Now, more generally, what's in sort of for uh, future? Um, and uh, we think the future is, is you know, always shaped by the present. Uh, what we see today in terms of requirements will influence what we develop. Um, so one area that has, be, has received a lot of attention recently, uh, just in the last, I'd say, year or so, is, is metadata operations. So um, over the last couple of years, we have significantly improved metadata usability uh, with scale-out metadata, which is essentially standard now. Um, and um, scale out metadata that gives you a lot of control over the way how you scale out uh, uh, metadata across metadata servers. 
but also in future, I think we want to improve metadata performance uh, very significantly so that we talk about not uh, hundreds of thousands of metadata operations, but millions or tens of millions of real metadata operations uh, like file creations uh, in a single file system. So we have tests that show that you know some of it is possible. We have some customers who want to go in that direction. Um, so you will see a lot of effort on metadata operations. Um, all of the Lustre metadata operations are always fully POSIX. Um, and you know, for some applications, that may be a bit of an overkill. Uh, so one of the nice attributes of the file system is that it is you know, probably the most consistent, a uh, POSIX consistent file system available. Um, but one thing that we may be looking at in future is to reduce POSIX consistency for certain applications that don't need full POSIX consistency and that way speed up metadata performance for a given application or a set of applications. Um, we also have done a lot of work on single threaded um, uh, I.O. and um, we have data that shows that we can go to tens of gigabytes per second uh, for a single uh, thread. Um, so there is a lot of work that has been going into this in the last one or two years, and we'll see more of that uh, coming out very soon. And this, I think, is one of the, the advantages, of course, of, of having a, a, a file system that's very close to the Linux kernel, is that we can do a lot of interesting things uh, that um, some of the more modern file systems that use user space, um, fuse type of clients, uh, are simply cannot or will not be able to do. Um, another project that um, I think is quite interesting and has received a lot of attention, uh, again, with some of our partners, is um, security across an entire data center. Uh, so we have partners who want to do Kerberos support, not just for you know, a set of nodes or a, a given file system, but really the entire data center. Uh, and I think that's a, a quite interesting uh, development. We have shown that we can do uh, uh, security at almost no or very minimal performance impact. Um, we we are doing a lot of work these days on improving resilience and recovery. So I think the latest Lustre versions have not been um, they have they have been extremely stable, but they have not just been stable. They're also becoming uh, more resilient and recovery is becoming easier. Uh, and you will see a lot more work on that in future so that recovery operations are more automated, don't impact the usage of a file system, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then finally, there is a, a couple of areas that are sort of mandated by the new use cases like cloud. Uh, so management and automation and automation uh, by various means, including REST APIs, uh, for large-scale data centers is really an area that we spend a lot of time these days. Um, so, so far, you know, Lustre file systems typically have been single-user file systems, so automation was not as critical. So now we see increasingly file systems that use multi-tendency, namespace isolation, uh, and span very large data centers, so automation uh, and management is really becoming critical. And it's, you see a lot of interesting activity here uh, coming out in the next year. And then, of course, you know, there's new platforms. Um, uh, so we have had our first discussions about supporting uh, new CPUs like RISC-V, and you will continue uh, to see, uh, we will continue sort of to support most recent uh, CPU, GPU platforms in a, in a broad fashion. Um, so whatever, uh, device is, is entering the market, we will find a way to support. I think these are some of the main focus areas uh, for us in the next couple of years. In the presentations today, you will see a lot more detail uh, and you will see sort of in, in uh, more clarity sort of what the directions will be. I'll stop here. Um, I'll finally like to thank our sponsors. Um, so it's the usual suspects, and we have one new sponsor this year, which is Lenovo. Um, so um, I think we have been finally able to convince Lenovo that looking at the Lustre solution is meaningful. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, with that, uh, I'd like to conclude my uh, introduction to this event. 
uh, and uh, uh, hand back to uh, uh, Chia uh, to announce the next uh, speaker. Thank you.